Hello to everyone. This is Viewpoint on Noyan Tapan TV and I am Benjamin Pogosian. In this episode we will discuss the latest developments in Nagorno-Karabakh. In last week the International Court of Justice adopted a resolution and agreed with Armenia's demand to impose a provisional measures on Azerbaijan, demanding from Azerbaijan to do everything at its disposal to secure the unimpeded cargo, vehicle and people access on both directions in Lachin Corridor. The ICG decision is a very significant legal victory for Armenia. However, uh, many now wonder what may happen if Azerbaijan rejects to implement the ICG decision. And given the initial reactions from Azerbaijani side, official Baku is not going to realize this decision. Even there were some attempts by diplomatic corps of Azerbaijan and by deputy foreign minister to misinterpret the ICG decision and to argue that ICG didn't demand from Azerbaijan to end the blockade. Of course, given the fact that starting from December 12, 2022, when Azerbaijan imposed the blockade, Azerbaijani government continuously has rejected the mere effect of the blockade, we may think that this reaction is possible. From Azerbaijani logic, if there is no blockade on Lachin Corridor, then Azerbaijani government can do anything to end this blockade. However, uh, the rejection to realize the ICG decisions is not a good one for country's image and for country's international standing. But even more, this is a terrible sign for the court itself and general for the international law and for the United Nations. Because yes, previously there were some attempts not to realize or not to obey to the ICG provisional uh, decisions and also the final judgments. But at the end of the day, these attempts were made by the great powers, which <coughs> we may say that have some geopolitical cloud sometimes not to obey to the decisions of the ICG. But even if a country like an Azerbaijan, which not itself even is a middle power, will be able to not realize or to ignore the decision of ICG, then what message this will transfer to the other actors of international relations. In this case, everyone can say that, okay, ICG, International Court of Justice, is nothing. These decisions are nothing, so we can simply ignore. And this will be another very tough hit to the international system and to, to the international legal system, which already is suffering due to the growing geopolitical competition between great powers. <coughs> At the end of the day, International Court of Justice, and we have to accept it, it has no police force to force or to impose any sanctions on any country. It simply made this decision and then it's up to international community, to the international bodies, including United Nations, United Nations Security Council, individual countries, to force the realization of the decisions of ICG. Of course, there are also legal debate that the provisional measures, measures allow any country to go to the UN Security Council or only the non-realization of final judgment of the ICG will allow to directly apply to the UN Security Council. But regardless of this legal debate, fact is fact. International Court of Justice, the UN Court, agreed with Armenia that first, uh, there is a blockade on Lachin Corridor, and second, that Azerbaijan should do everything to end the blockade. The second very important development which took place uh, during the previous week was Nagorno-Karabakh Republic's President Arai Kaurutunian's decision uh, to fire State Minister Ruben Vartanian. The saga around Ruben Vartanian was developing since December 12th because Azerbaijan, while rejecting the mere effect of the blockade, also was putting some conditions to end the blockade. And at the end of the day, there were two maybe primary conditions by Azerbaijan. Condition number one, to establish Azerbaijani checkpoint on the road. And demand number two, to fire Ruben Vartanian from his position as a state minister. Of course, it's very tempting to say that by his decision of February 23, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh Republic President Arai Karutinian simply realized Azerbaijan's demands and bow to the Azerbaijani pressure and also we may argue that definitely these type of decisions cannot be taken without consultation and pre preliminary agreement with Republic of Armenia's government. So yes, it's very tempting to say that Arai Karutinian and also Armenia's leadership bowed to Azerbaijani pressure and decided to fire Ruben Vartanian simply to satisfy Azerbaijani demands. But as we know, nothing is uh, blue and white. Uh, definitely, Azerbaijan's demand 
and the Azerbaijanis pressure played a role in forming the decision of Arai Kaurichunyan to fire Ruben Vartanian, but I don't believe that it was the only reason why Ruben Vartanian got fired. Definitely there also were domestic political developments in Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, and also we should take into account that the small communities have their own dynamics, including their own domestic political dynamics. But at the end of the day, Ruben Vartanian is no longer the state minister of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, and Azerbaijan hinted that it may ease its pressure on Nagorno-Karabakh. Almost 24 hours after the Arai Karutunyan's decision to fire Ruben Vartanian, there was a meeting between representatives of Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and Azerbaijan, facilitated by Russian peacekeepers. And during the meeting, agreement was reached to restore the full-scale supply of gas and electricity to Nagorno-Karabakh. We know that starting from January 9, Azerbaijan damaged the only high-voltage lines which supplies electricity from Armenia to Nagorno-Karabakh, and Azerbaijan was cutting off and then turning on the gas supplies almost on a daily basis. So we may say that the decision to fire Ruben Vartanian at least allowed Azerbaijan or allowed Nagorno-Karabakh to come to an understanding with Azerbaijan and to restore the gas and electricity supplies. But will it be sufficient to also end the blockade on Lachin Corridor? Now it's very challenging to assess because, as I mentioned, Azerbaijan had two primary demands to end the blockade. First, demand was regarding the fate of Ruben Vartanian, but also Azerbaijan wants to have an Azerbaijani checkpoint on Lachin Corridor, while everyone in Nagorno-Karabakh, in Armenia, and I believe also in international community, understands that the establishment of Azerbaijani checkpoint on Lachin Corridor de facto will mean to stop any meaningful flow of uh, people, vehicles and cargo from Armenia to Nagorno-Karabakh and vice versa. In any case, the decision to fire State Minister Ruben Vartanian somehow may ease the tensions and also may create more conducive environment to resume the negotiations between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Negotiation process was in deadlock after October 6, 2022 Prague meeting and the deadlock was broken only in during the Munich Security Conference, when United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken organized a summit with participation of Azerbaijani President and Armenian Prime Minister President Aliyev and Nikol Pashinyan met in Munich. Also, there was a panel discussion on South mm, Caucasus, where Azerbaijan again reiterated its maximalistic positions. In any case, the meeting which took place in Munich was important that somehow we may say that now the negotiation process at least have chances to be resumed. And I believe that this is good for the region, for Armenia and for Nagorno-Karabakh, because the negotiations, even with less advancements or less achievements, at least they decrease the chances of another escalation. This is all for today, and we will meet soon.